please can I just sort of take things back to the start with you? Have you always been an endurance athlete? Uh, no, from birth, I didn't do any running. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the, uh, no, I guess everybody is born um, into different environments, different scenarios. And yeah, I, I love sport. I wasn't particularly academic at school. I wasn't too bad, but sport was definitely where my heart lay. Um, uh, and so I, I suppose my, my life story is love sport, lived in the countryside, did a lot of cycling and running just to see friends. You know, I'd run 10 miles to school, cycle 10 miles to school sometimes um, and back again. Um, and so that was a, definitely a base fitness as a kid. Um, I ran my first marathon when I was 11 um, and then dropped it. Like I didn't do running. Running running when you're 11 that far is brutal and you hate it. Um, and so I didn't do it afterwards. Um, I then kind of went into school and then went into skiing. I was um, in the under 19s ski team for a while, did some proper professional skiing. Um, and that was my love of sport. And I had my the voice of my, my parents on my shoulder telling me that I should probably get a real job because um, because I need to pay the bills. And so fortunately I went into finance, banking, um, earned some money and then uh, at the same time simultaneously you know, degraded my soul and sport was still in my blood. And so I thought, you know what, I need to go and do some more running, kind of use it as therapy, uh, which it definitely is for me now. And so I, I got into running um, and I started to run longer distances. You know, I'm not a fast runner. I am not a good runner. People always look at me as like the, the marathon man. I am not a good marathon runner. I can assure you of that. Um, I just love it. Um, and I plod slowly and, and I get the job done. The master himself, Sachin Tendulkar. Tendulkar, I don't think you really need to say why he makes your team. Um, you know, he's certainly one of the best three cricketers to ever play the game. So. He gets in my team at number two. In a recent interview I, I listened to with yourself, you stressed the importance of human kindness along the way as well and the, the random acts of kindness that came from from, from strangers. There was one inc incident in uh, Barcelona where a lady, I think, let you you stay at her accommodation. And yeah, you really played on how important that was. Oh, absolutely. The whole trip would have been... Um, a cost cost much more, but I wouldn't have had the same experience. And it was vital for the success of sharing the journey, and and sharing the journey then led to donations coming in. Because you know, without word of mouth, without social media, without the internet, I wouldn't have even attempted this trip because we wouldn't have gained the fundraising that we were after. You know, and so that's a miracle in itself. Um, and this particular lady in Barcelona, who I'm sworn to secrecy to, I can't use her name because she just wants to be uh, anonymous. She's a brilliant, brilliant woman, um, and I had many people like her that hosted me. I stayed with 80 odd families around the world, some of which um, didn't really know who I was um, at all. They just, you know, were told by a neighbour that spoke English that I should host them and they hosted me. You know, that was the kind of thing that happened. And, you know, in the middle of Honduras, as, as, as an example, with a family that, that didn't speak any, any English whatsoever. Um, and I was there just because they wanted to help. <laughs> and that happened all over the world. And I mean, this incident in Barcelona was just amplified because she managed to support in so many ways. She not only picked, a, picked me up from the airport, she helped put some money in my pocket. She then drove me to two other countries to complete my marathons. She organised food for me. She literally did everything. Um, and then that was repeated many times by lots of people around the world. And, and I was very lucky that when we crossed the finish line in Athens, having completed the world, which we really didn't think at times it was going to happen, we got to the point where uh, I had all of, not all of them, many of the people I met around the world that had helped me um, actually there. And, and we, we sat down and had dinner in Athens and it was a very emotional time, but, um, but a joyful one. Um, my number eight is Andrew Flintoff. Uh, Freddie's, every time you came up against him, I can remember actually a game at Old Trafford. It was just after the 2005 Ashes when we played uh, Lancashire at Old Trafford. And Justin Lang was our captain and it was almost like the ashes were all on again. He bowled a spell of the most, well, it was one of the most ferocious spells of bowling. I remember Justin Lang coming off the field. He had about seven or eight bruises all in his rib cage and one in his armpit. I mean, nearly, nearly finished him for the game. Um, and that's saying something for someone as tough as JL, but Andrew Flint's off with bat and ball, an absolute match winner. This is one of the biggest troubles I have with recounting the journey is that the me before the trip, the me during the trip and the me now 
are all very different individuals um, because I'm in different mindsets for such a long period of time. You know, two years of planning, two years of doing, and now I'm on the other side talking about it. And the mind has a brilliant way of forgetting the bad stuff. Um, but in my in my in my honest honest answer to that is I didn't struggle physically to finish the runs. There was just many obstacles to overcome in getting there. And so because I'd done so much, you know, I'd done by the time I'd finished the trip, you know, there's 196 countries in the world, but I'd already done 400 and something odd marathons before I even started. So my body was well trained and I could run. Um, it's just when you're then chased by dogs, when you're hit by a car or when you're shot at or when you get locked up or all this sort of stuff that is a little bit of a blocker um and so you know you have to you have to overcome those but there were times when i was running in torrential rain in some of the most tropical beautiful places that you know the day before people were sunbathing and i arrived and it was torrential rain and then ran in the rain and left again you know um and i'm writing finishing writing my book at the moment about the whole trip and there's many moments where i'm like i can't really believe i was in that position you know i missed a festival a massive festival in the sun glorious sunshine festival by a day and i landed in an empty city and ran in the rain and left again you know and so seen the world but not always at its best 